Hi everyone and welcome to my quest to use Graal ahead of time compilation to make execution of scripts written in Java really really fast. In the last video I started a new project called Kalis, but so far it's just a simple wrap around the JVM. If you write a script file, you put in the shebang line, not the JVM, but Kalis, and it simply takes your script and then forwards it to the JVM without doing anything much. Now we can take the big step, using Graal ahead of time compiler to create a native image for the script so the next time we can run the image instead of regular old and slow JVM. If you've ever used Graal's ahead of time compiler, I'd really like to hear about it. So leave a comment with your experience down below. Kind of forgot to tell you who I am. I'm Nikolai and now let's go live. Wow, my finger is huge. Now we get to the really interesting bit. Let's compile this shit. Let's see how we can use Graal at all. First step, next step now is to rewrite the hints because I want to give people who drop into the stream a better chance of knowing where we're at. So we're trying to do this, to write scripts in Java. Achieved and what we want to do. As you can see, the thing on the right-hand side updating, right? I just have the, the kind of line, lines that are there. So what we achieved is um, wrap Java 11 in custom in our in Kali's. So we trap wrap that, um, or rather, Kali's wraps Java 11, which is good. So that means JVM, we can be more precise, precise, JVM 11. So that means we already know how to be transparent in that part. Um, so we know that. And then the next to do is um, compile scripts of Graal. Well, what else? There are only scripts, right? Compile with Graal. Let's go back. So we just made a list of to do so we know what to do. Compile with Graal, that's the next goal. So at the moment we have start, create script and start process and we're gonna ban that into... Mm. I'm sure there's no... <laughs> oh, sorry. So what we're gonna do here... We're gonna um, execute with JVM 11 or oh, JVM. That's what we're doing here. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna not do that anymore. Instead, we're gonna execute after AOT. Right? That's what we wanna do. And we do that. Um, script file and we're going to do that in a two-step process and that's basically compile and then run No. Um, so what we do is we are going to AOT compile this script file, and we're going to expect to get back a path uh, to the script image. And what we're going to do then is we're going to run that, I guess, right? So that would be um, return execute execute image yep 
yes yes and that would be very similar to this down here oh Okay, so that's how we execute the image, right? So when we get a path to the uh, to the final image, we just we just run that image. Bam, nothing else to do. That's what we did earlier, right? On the on the terminal. Yeah, right. Okay, that's all we did. Okay. Good. So now we uh, this should work later. Now we want to have run create. Now run AOT compile. And this is a little bit more fun. Not the haha -ha kind of fun, but fun. You mean this might be now? Oh yeah, right. That's true. Okay. I need this. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's defensive. Uh, create script path. Okay, now we got the path to the script. Now process builder, do things. The whole inherit IO thing, we have to handle that as well at some point. We can always inherit all of that everywhere, but we do that for now. Java C, and then we had to put it somewhere. Whew. Okay, there's a couple of things here. Uh, make path to compile Java compiler configurable. Then to do make output directory configurable or otherwise yeah, somehow sane, but for now we're just gonna use dash build, dash d build, sorry, for the output. Then we're gonna use the script path, inherit and oh, start, and we're not even gonna, just gonna wait for immediately. Now the question is how do we get the path of the resulting file? Do we have to recreate? So there are some rules how the, how it's created, obviously. Oh right, this is just a normal compiler. The rule is just it's the same, but with dot class in the end. It's in build, but it's got dot class in the end. Ah, that's ugly. That's ugly. Find a better way to determine. Class name, class file name, but for now, this should do um, path get built pa paths get built and then resolve. And now we use the scripting script file, but we replace. <laughs> it hurts me to write this. <laughs> Replace dot Java with dot class. And I think that should work. Ooh. This is not AOT compiled though. This is Java C compiled. So and if once I have time in Java C. Now we should this is some compile to bytecode because that's what we're doing here. And that one is uh comp Compile to image. Okay. Now we compile to bytecode. I actually would like to see where we're at, whether anything of this actually works a little bit. So I'm willing not to do this, and instead we're gonna simply print the script, Im script image path 
and let's see whether it does anything useful. Yeah, so this is this is there's something wrong. This is not a flag, obviously. Why? Why is it hello scripts? All right. Oh. Okay, so the problem is that the path we get is the path to a script file. Not to a Java source file. Huh. Okay, so the question now is, so here's, here's the thing. So far, I personally wrote this in this file, because it's easier to edit, and then create this file under the assumption that this is what's going to be the input later. But maybe it's not. Would it make sense to assume that other people, just like I do it now, would prefer to write in a .java file? And then pass the .java? So this is what I want to have. I want people to write a script like this. This is going to be on their path. This is what I want to work with. Because that's the only sane way to execute a script. Nobody wants to execute a script that looks like this. Even if it's on their path, which looks ridiculous, nobody wants that. So they will have a file like this with the shebang to my own command there. So I do have to be a little more sophisticated actually. Okay, so we have to get back to this. So invented flag, this should be a dot, if this is not dot java, the compiler can't handle it. Huh. Okay. Um, that's interesting. I guess what we could do, but what I really don't want at the moment is, we could actually use, not run the compiler binary, Instead, we could use uh, the compiler API that is built into the JVM and get the compiler and use it that way. Because then we can, I'm pretty sure we can just pipe in just bytecode, uh, sorry, just, so just characters. Then we don't have to actually deal with the, because now we have a file that has a wrong name. That's a problem. So we have to recreate, we have to change the name, but also we have to pick, we have to take this line out or at least put a comment before it because otherwise this line throws off the compiler as well. So we have to do things here and I thought maybe it would be easier if we use the compiler API because then we can just load the file, ignore the first line or put the comment in front of the first line and pipe just the characters into the compiler. Never mind what the file is called. And if that works, then maybe we can also compile, we can also maybe just define what the name of the resulting bytecode is Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it would give us back just bytes and then we can just write the bytes to disk wherever we want with whatever file name we want and we wouldn't have to do this. Okay, so chat, since you've been so helpful with all these streams crap, which I don't know much about, what's the easiest way to get the output streams of my own process? I'm sure this is easy, right? I want to get the output stream of... Is it system? Oh, I think it's just system... Isn't there something here? Set set in? No, get get in. Get. I'll leave that to you. Uh, help me out here. Uh, I want to pass the input uh, output and error stream of my own process. Ah, oh, god damn it. I'm so fucking stupid. Yes. I would like to blame something. The glass of wine? Just, you know, I'm just so shy and I'm on stream, so that makes, throws me off, maybe. Ah, yeah, okay, so what we're doing now, we're gonna read the script file, and we're gonna change the first line, right? And that's what we wanna have to do. Oh, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's not do that yet. Let's... Um, let's see the compile error that we get. Script source. 
Aren't the bytes technically dependent on um, on encoding? Let's just ignore that bit. <laughs> Let's first see how the why this does not work, because it doesn't. What we get here is output that we did something wrong. And I think the input stream doesn't work as I expect it to work. Run the tool with the given O channels and arguments. By convention, a tool returns zero for success and non-zero for errors. Any diagnostic generator will be written to either out or error in some unspecified format. In standard input. Yes, standard input is not the way that the compiler reads. Source files, I guess. If it would... We can try that very easily. If it would, would read them, we could just do this. Uh, we could just cut demo demo. Nah. That gives us the file, right? And then we could just pipe this into Java 11. Because now standard input contains the content of the file and drum roll. Why not? Build not found. Oh yeah, haha, <laughs> Java C maybe, right? No source files, okay. Yeah. I want to take the source file, change its name, change the first line, and then put that into a, into a new source file and then compile that. Okay, so uh, I think what we need for that in the long run is a working directory. Oh, well, that's the name of the that's the name I was looking for earlier. It's not user dear. We're, we're collecting too many changes. This is working dear. Okay, what I have here, let's call it build dear door. Obviously, we still have to do this. So the idea is uh, this math this method creates uh, a variant of the script that can be compiled and it's going to be in the build directory. All I can do is really just return the path to that script. I'll do that, but then we should get the same as error as earlier because now it's still the, the wrong name, basically. But I want to get into a state where something works. Can't find symbol. Create compilables. Oh, right. Uh, no, right. Why not? Ah, oh, skipped script. Ah, so maybe that w was indeed... Maybe it's indeed like this. Yeah, it is. Okay. Now we're back where we were earlier. And that's what we're doing right now. We're trying to compile to bytecode. We're taking the name of the script file. And at the moment, we're just operating on that file. Direct file. And that does not work because this is the way to use the Java compiler. But the Java compiler then complains that we want to compile a file like this. Which we're not allowed to. We're not allowed to compile a file that does not end in .java. Because the compiler expects files to end in .java. Right. So now we turn the hello-scripts file into a hello-scripts.java file. But we're also going to remove the first line. Because the first line is this and this does not compile. We're not actually going to remove it. We're just going to uh, put a... Could come put um, comments in uh, before them so that the line numbers don't change, so that compiled errors are in the same line number. Okay, so I'm not going to do this. Want to be um, files dot lines or read all lines? Actually, is yeah, it can't it can't be long. How long can this be? Not long enough to cause uh, to to. To make so that, we, that streaming is necessary. So I would try, you know, throw, because we're throwing all the exceptions at the moment. Oh yeah, actually good to do. Um, 
handle exceptions and turn them eh, then into informative error messages. These are the source lines. Source lines dot at zero because we know that the shebang line has to be the first line. That's defined by um, the head of sorry. I guess I guess that's what bash needs as well. But it's definitely also defined uh, for the jab that introduced the single source for execution. It also expects that to be the first line. It's because it needs to do the same thing basically, right? If it sees this, it needs to comment this out. And, or rather, I think it sets it to the empty string, but the point is it also expects it to be the first line. So we're safe using the zero here. The path is built here. Oh, we need a name now. Oh, we, you know what? We can just can we just call it any name we want? No, I think we can't. I think we call it script.java. I think we call it script.java. Then it, the compiler will complain. Yeah, right. It should have it should be the, the class name, right? I think it. I think it has to be. Well, we'll figure that out. Yeah, I think this could work. Let's give it a try. Yeah. <laughs> Class hello scripts is public but should be declared in a file called hello scripts or Java. God damn it. Do we have to reverse the reverse engineer the name from here? Or <laughs> better. <laughs> oh, this is This is bad. I mean what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look for this. We're gonna pattern match. Not pattern match, what we're gonna match on this to define the name of that class. Oh, this is ugly. Um, but yeah. Or you just say that all scripts are just in a class called S. <laughs> Regex, yeah, now we have two problems, right? <laughs> Yeah, but then all the but then these scripts would have to oh no wait oh right so you're saying right it could still be called hello scripts right this is the only thing that matters um yeah should we do that mm. and I would have to rename that as well I think so let's try this for a second let's see how let's see how you know how long it takes with the regex and then time box this to like five minutes and if we don't get it done in five minutes. I'll, I'll be eager to uh, to force that convention for now. Now I have to extract that too, right? Script class it is. And then a small, like, just like really minuscule little to do here to do extract class name from source file to allow arbitrary names we're just going to prove proof of concept here right once we're done we're going to punt this to some some junior developer and be like you know it's easy just fix all the to do's and then later we're going to complain why the code is so complex um, so if you are looking for an architect out there, I just qualify myself, I think. It's just a matter of implementation. I hear that occasionally. <laughs> yeah, it's just a proof of concept. If you can give me ASCII art of the dog sitting in the flame in the, in the burning house, I'll put it here. I think this should work. Awesome. 
That's the only Null Portal exception I ever wanted. I ever hoped for. That's this one, because we did actually compile it to bytecode. <laughs> now we compile to native image from that path and we did this like this. We had the build directory on the class path and then we name the scripts file and we now know that this file must be called scripts or script singular. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so that would then be... That, that's a process though, right? Because we don't have... Here we use native image. Is that where it's on my terminal? Oh, sorry, on my machine. Which native image? Yes. Boy, that's a lot of to do. Make path to native image configurable. dash cp and then comes the path to bytecode that's that's gonna be bytecode get parent to string that's a class path and then we get bytecode dot get file name to string so about that code oh well that's a bit that's not good and now we have to you have to once again get from the file name oh no we know because it's script.java it will be script um where does it put it? Put that though. Can we tell the native image command where to put the where to put the result? I really want to do that. Native image help. Ah, image name. Is the image name. A, can the image name be a path? That would be nice. Okay, so what we mean we can give here we can add the path where we want this to end up. And we want this to end up in path uh, image is build directory resolve uh, script script this is where I want to have this and this is also our return strip class not found there has something to do with this here Um, it would be nice to get some kind of debug output to tell the process builder to, 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 to show us. Is there a way to do that? I swear. Yeah, I'm gonna. Later, later. Com what command down there? This string for each print.
Okay, so let's rebuild this command. Let's see why it might fail. Oh, right, it's not script.class, it's just script. There we go, okay, right. So the problem is... Get file name. I think there's a way to get, get rid of the, of the ending. Replace class with nothing. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. There are so many, there are so many assumptions in here, like this is called script and then it's called dot class and then we can just remove the dot class. There are so many things here that are spread across methods, like if some of that breaks it's going to be really hard to figure that out. But if we do that, if we fix this, then I guess we're going to fix this as well at the same time. Okay. Now let's run the demo. Something should happen. And I'm not even sure actually anymore what, what exactly should happen now, because I'm not sure where exactly we, we stopped. A base name method? Yeah, something. Well, I thought there was something. I'm not stopping you. Like, look it up. That would be interesting. Great! So you get this... I'll put an exception here. Return that, and that means we can return this already, right? Execute after, like, I think now this might actually work. That would be insane if this worked. Every test run now takes 30 seconds. Like, we have a really high incentive to get this whole caching thing going. <laughs> oh, by the way, in case you're interested, I'm planning to stream that for one more hour, roundabout. Uh, so my deadline is 8 p.m. UTC. <gasps> Holy shit! Holy shit, you see that it works! I'm amazed how amazed I was that it actually works. Next steps for Kalis are twofold. It needs to store the native image on disk, that's really easy. But on launch, it needs to determine whether for a given script it already has a native image. If so, it launches that. Otherwise, it compiles in the background while forwarding the script to the JVM so it gets executed immediately. I'll post videos where I implement those features on this channel, so subscribe if you want to see that. If you want to join me working on Kalis or other projects, then head over to Twitch where I'm NipaFX, link down below. I mostly code Java, but I also got a little bit of TypeScript going, so if any of that interests you, or you just want to hang out with some fellow programmers, just come by and drop into my stream. Finally, for YouTube videos, Twitch streams, blog posts, Java news, or just to get in touch, follow me on Twitter where I'm at NipaFX. I'll see you around. So long!